Dying is an art, like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. Sylvia Plath ends her life at the young age of 30 when she commits suicide in February of 1963. Although her life was short, Sylvia Plath still managed to make a name for herself through her writings, many of which were not fully acknowledged by the public until several years following her death. Sylvia Plath's compelling writing made her one of the most influential female writers of the 20th century in her exploration of death, oppression, and the role of being a woman within her own life experiences. Sylvia Plath, born on October 27, 1932, in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, was the eldest child of Aurelia Schober Plath and Otto Plath. Her brother, Warren Joseph Plath, is born on April 27, 1935. The family moves to Winthrop, Massachusetts in 1938. At the age of eight, Sylvia Plath publishes her first poem in a local newspaper. Her father, Otto Plath, dies the same year from complications of undiagnosed diabetes. He spent much of his time doing research on bees and became an internationally recognized expert. Several of Sylvia Plath's poetic works reflect her father's knowledge of bees, such as The Bee Meeting and The Arrival of the Bee Box. There is also speculation that Plath had a toxic relationship with her father because of poems such as Daddy and the Colossus, portraying her father as a Nazi in a broken statue. Plath discovers her talents in many areas such as drama, art, literature, theater, and journalism. Being in the public school system, as described in her 1962 essay, America, America, seems to have shaped the historical consciousness and political sensibility that characterizes her mature work. She starts college in 1950 at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts, where she attends on a scholarship. She majors in English and publishes her own writings in national magazines, including Seventeen and Mademoiselle. During her time as a guest editor at Mademoiselle, Plath suffers from depression. When she returns to Massachusetts, she is treated with electroconvulsive therapy, but the treatment is unsuccessful. Plath makes her first suicide attempt in August of 1953 by taking sleeping pills. She is admitted to two different hospitals in Massachusetts, treated again with electroconvulsive therapy, insulin, and other methods. A year later, Plath returns to college at Smith. She graduates in 1955 but continues her studies in Cambridge, England, where she attends on a scholarship. While there, she meets her future husband and fellow poet Ted Hughes, whom she marries on June 16, 1956. She stays in England for a year to finish her degree, then moves back to the States with her husband and teaches at her alma mater, Smith College, as an English instructor for a year. Over the next two years, Plath starts exploring her interest in poetry and writing further by attending poetry seminars and befriending other poets such as Anne Sexton while working at small part-time jobs. On April 1st, 1960, Plath gives birth to her first child, Frida Rebecca Hughes, after she and Hughes move back to London. Plath begins to challenge the standard role of women in the home during the 1950s and 60s by making a name and career for herself by doing what she loved. Writing was an unstable career for anyone, but was especially unconventional for women at this time. In October of the same year, Plath's first major collection of works, The Colossus and Other Poems, is published in England. In her poems, Plath includes poetry about her father, the Holocaust, post-war culture, and herself. A year later, Plath unfortunately has a miscarriage and has surgery to remove her appendix. In 1961, Plath is awarded a Eugene F. Saxton Fellowship to begin writing her first novel, The Bell Jar. On January 17, 1962, Plath has her second child, Nicholas Farrar Hughes. At this time, she finds that her husband Ted has been unfaithful to her and separates from him, expressing her emotions through more than 30 poems that she writes just after their separation. She moves to London, taking her two children with her. In January of 1963, The Bell Jar is published under the name Victoria Lucas, Plath's pseudonym. The book is not an immediate sensation, and Plath would not hear much about it before she commits suicide only a month later on February 11th by keeping her children out of the room, stuffing towels under the door, and turning on her gas stove after putting her head in. Ariel Plath's second book of poems is published in the United States in 1966 after being edited by her husband. 
Ariel quickly gains popularity in the United States since the poems within it reflect the women's movement of the time. When Plath is working on Ariel, she writes the poems from women's points of view, standing up for themselves in an opposing, patriarchal society. Women's rights was one of the most significant issues during Plath's life. Her sequence of B poems contribute her reflections on women's creativity, resourcefulness, and will to survive to the issue. Eventually, the Bell Jar is published under the name Sylvia Plath in both the United Kingdom and the United States by the year 1971. Ted Hughes publishes Collected Poems after Plath's death in 1981, which wins a Pulitzer Prize. Hughes also publishes an abridged version of her journals in 1982. The unabridged journals of Sylvia Plath is published in 2000 after Hughes' death. Sylvia Plath's exploratory writing style and willingness to take risks in her own work is often what distinguishes her from other writers. In her poem called Lady Lazarus, which tells of her several suicide attempts, Plath's unconventional style is portrayed through her intense wording and violent imagery. Much of the poem provokes harsh descriptions, such as the lines stating, Dying is an art. Like everything else, I do it exceptionally well. Plath's poetry not only focuses on national issues, but is also very personal. She writes about her father, her mother, her struggle with depression and mental illness, and many other aspects of her personal life that other poets and authors tended to avoid at this time. Plath broke the rules of patriarchy and wrote about things that challenged society at the time. She was not the typical housewife that had a perfect family or home. Her unconventional writing style and lifestyle is what sets her apart from other women and writers of her time. The child's cry melts in the wall, and I am the arrow, the dew that flies, Suicidal at one with the drive into the red eye, the cauldron of morning.